The Jack Benny program. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. At 49, American. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LS, MFT. LS, MFT. LS, MFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, Smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Excuse me, this is Kenny Delmar. Excuse me, I have a special announcement to make. Herbert Tarrington cigarettes are back. Good news for those who prefer a cork-tip cigarette. Herbert Tarrington is back, and there's something about them you'll like. Herbert Tarrington is back after being made only for the armed forces. Yes, Herbert Tarrington is back. That cork tip cigarette, Herbert Tarrington, available now for you. Yes, Herbert Tarrington is back. And remember, there's something about them you like. There's something about them you like. This is Kenny Delmar. I trust you will welcome home Herbert Tarrington. There's something about them you like. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program, starring Ray Milland, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our master of ceremonies, a man who... Wait a minute, Don, wait a minute. What's the idea of saying the Lucky Strike program starring Ray Milan? Well, Jack, I didn't see anybody get up and walk out. <laughs> I mean, that has nothing to do with it. Oh, Jack, stop pouting. Your lower lip looks like a shoehorn. I'm not pouting. Well, you told us yourself that Ray Milan was going to be our guest. That still doesn't entitle him to top billing. He's just a star in pictures. I'm a star of stage, screen, and radio. <laughs> And we'll milk cows if you back them into Beverly Hills. <laughs> well, now you're just being smart. I merely said that Don didn't have to give Ray Milan star billing when he's only going to be our guest. Jack, I only did that as a matter of courtesy. Don, if you want to be courteous, do it on the Jenny Sims show, not mine. <laughs> and another thing. Jackson, I know what you're beeping about. I've been with you for eight years and I've never had no star billing. Well, you've been with me for ten years. I don't count the two years I was auditioning. <laughs> Look, just be happy you got the job. Now, let's get on with... Gosh, Ray Milan should have been here a half hour ago. I can't understand what's holding him up. I saw his picture, Jackson. I couldn't understand what held him up either. <laughs> yeah. I saw the picture. I went to the box office, bought a ticket, and they gave me my change in pretzels. Stop with the gags already. I'm going to call Ray home. Oh, Hall Jack, for... Jack, Jack, you don't have to. Ray Milan just came in. He did? Good, good. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest, one of the finest actors in Hollywood, the star of The Lost Weekend, and winner of this year's Academy Award, Ray Milan. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Say, uh, Ray, Ray, how come you're so late? Well, I'm sorry, Jack, but I stopped off at the newspaper office to put an ad in for a butler. Oh, I, I thought you had a butler. Oh, I have three, as a matter of fact, but they want a fourth for bridge. <laughs> oh, well, wouldn't it be cheaper to teach them gin rummy and let one of them go? <laughs> if it was Jack, he'd teach them solitaire and let two of them go. Mary, please. Well, Ray, it certainly is a wonderful achievement, getting the Oscar. Tell me, how did it make you feel winning the Academy Award? Oh, I don't know, Jack. I don't feel any different. I'm still the same sweet, modest, lovable fellow I always was. <laughs> Gee, if I ever won it, I'd be a louse. <laughs> Gosh, 
gosh, Ray, what I wouldn't give just to see the Oscar. Well, Jack, by coincidence, I just happened to have it with me. Hmm. <laughs> Weighs 25 pounds. He just happens to have it with me. <laughs> Uh, let me, uh, let me see it, Ray. Yeah, yeah? Gee, isn't it cute? A bronze Oscar with a little ice bag on its head. <laughs> you know, Ray, this may surprise you, but I've never won an Academy Award. Why, Jack Benny, you haven't. <laughs> Why, Ray Milland, what a performance. <laughs> Oh, Jack. Jack, why don't you introduce me? Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Ray, I want you to meet the members of my cast. This is Mary Livingston. Hello, Mary. I'm glad to know you. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Milan. Would you consider going out with a girl who doesn't drink? <laughs> Mary, please. Why, certainly, Mary. In fact, I like to go out with girls who don't drink. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Jack likes to go out with girls who don't eat. <laughs> And they're hard to find, sister. <laughs> and Ray, uh, Ray, this is, uh, this is Phil Harris. Hello, Phil. Amateur. <laughs> Amateur? Phil, you wouldn't appreciate this, but Lost Weekend was something new, something daring. I doubt if any other actor would have the stomach, the courage... <laughs> I mean, I doubt if any other actor would have the courage to attempt a role like that. Well, that shows you how much you know, Jackson. Right now, Gary Cooper's doing the same thing in Saratoga Drunk. <laughs> That's Trunk, Saratoga Trunk. Well, I'm glad you told me. I ain't gonna waste my cabbage going to see a lot of baggage. <laughs> yeah, baggage. Now, Ray, the reason I... Phil, why are you staring at Ray like that? Well, I'm just admiring the guy, Jackson. He does it and gets an Academy Award. I do it and get a hangover. <laughs> Still the weekend, go get lost. Now, Ray, the reason I asked Say, you Jack, to, uh... Jack, Jack, do you mind if I ask Mr. Milan a favor? Why, no, no. What is it, Don? Well, gosh, Ray, you're such a great actor and everything. And oh, well... And you're so... <laughs> you're so sweet, modest, and lovable. I know, I know. <laughs> hmm. Well, I read something in Shakespeare that I'd like to hear you do. You know the speech that starts out... To be or not to be? Oh, yeah, that's Hamlet's soliloquy. Why, certainly, Don, I'll be glad to do it. Good, good. I copied the speech myself and made just a few minor changes. Well, that's all right. Just give it to me and I'll be glad to read it. Here you are. Thanks. <clears throat> Quiet, everybody. L.S. or M.F.T.? <laughs> that is the question. Here, here. Whether it is nobler in the minds of men who know tobacco best <laughs> to be so round, so firm, so fully packed. Here, here. Or to be so free and easy on the draw. Here, here. Where, where? Here, here. Oh, oh. <laughs> and so, good citizen, remember, the quality... That's all American. You work for your boss and I'll work for mine. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Now, Ray. Ray, the reason I asked you to come over here is because tonight for our feature attraction, we're going to do our version of your picture, The Lost Weekend. Now, naturally, since I'm the, uh, <coughs> the star of this program, the leading role will be played by me. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Don't you think... But as long as I originated the part in the picture, I should also play it here. I do not. <laughs> I mean, just, just because you won an Academy Award has nothing to do with it. After all, when I was your age, I could have won an Oscar, too. Except there were no Academy Awards in those days. There were no movies, either. <laughs> no. And darn few people. may have had awfully long arms, but they were still people. <laughs> anyway, Ray, I think I should play the lead. But, Jack, that doesn't make sense. You brought me up here because of the lost weekend, and you give me nothing to do. Well, maybe... Say, I've got a wonderful idea. Let's both play the part. We'll be twin brothers. Twin brothers? Yeah, we'll give them a double feature. We'll be the Burnham brothers. How about it? Okay with me. That's fine. Now, Phil, you'll be our older brother who tries to convince us 
that drinking is very evil. <laughs> Who's going to convince me? <laughs> Phil, it's just a part. After all, you know, I don't drink and neither does Ray. Now, Mary, you're going to play Jane Wyman's part, the girl that Ray and I are in love with, but you can't make up your mind which one of us you want. The UNO should have problems that easy. <laughs> Mary, don't be so sure. You know, you might have to take Ray. Now, this play will go on immediately after the... I'll take it. Hello? Telephone call for Mr. Ray Milan. Oh, oh, just a minute. It's for you, Ray. For me? Well, hello? Hello, Mr. Milan. This is Rochester. <laughs> I saw by an ad in the paper that you wanted a butler, and I called up to find out about it. But, uh, aren't you already working? I sure am! <clears throat> well, why are you dissatisfied with your present position? Well, I've concluded that any relationship between the hours I work and the money I get is purely coincidental. <laughs> you consider yourself underpaid, huh? How much are you making now? Well, frankly, I'm ashamed to tell you, but if I have a suit cleaned and go to a movie in the same week, one of them has to be on the installment plan. <laughs> well, you spoke of long hours. What kind of hours have you been working? From eight in the morning till dark. Well, those aren't such long hours for a butler working until dark. Under normal conditions, no. But Mr. Benny has a sun lamp outside the kitchen window to fool me. And... <laughs> and that sun lamp fools you? Not only me, his chickens have been laying six eggs a day. <laughs> I see. Well, if you go to work for me, you'll find that your duties won't be hard, but they'll be exacting. Exacting? Yes. For instance, I like my breakfast served in bed. But unlike other people, I can't wait. I want it there when I awaken. Yes, sir. Uh, do you think you could have my breakfast ready the minute I wake up? Yes, sir. I'll pull the cork out the night before. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. I think you have a mistaken idea about my drinking, Rochester, because I never... Rochester? Ray, let me at that phone. Hello, Rochester, is that you? Uh-oh. Rochester, why did you call up Ray Milan looking for a job? It was an accident, boss. I called up the Homeway Laundry and got this number by mistake. The laundry? Then why'd you ask for Ray Milan? I didn't. I asked for May Dilban. <laughs> May Dilban? She's a starch girl on the fourth toe. <laughs> Rochester, that's a mighty weak story. What do you expect on a moment's notice? A bestseller? <laughs> Funny, and I'll talk to you when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Imagine doing a thing like that behind my back. Come on, Larry, let's have a song. Closer to me so I can see heaven in your eyes. Come closer to me so I can be close to paradise. Thrill me with your kisses. Let me learn what bliss is. Kiss me once and then we'll kiss and kiss again And life will be divine Come closer, my dear So I can hear music in my heart I've waited so long To hear the song That your love will start Darling, I'll adore you Live my whole life for you All I ask is this Please give me one more kiss And whisper you'll be mine All I ask is this Please give me one more kiss And whisper you'll be mine
Closer to Me, sung by Larry Stevens. Very good, Larry. I bought that record you made of that song, and it's swell. Thank you, Mr. Benny. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, our version of the Academy Award-winning picture, The Lost Weekend. As our story opens, Ray and Jack Burnham, twin brothers, have been persuaded by their elder brother, Philip, to go to the country for the weekend. At the moment, the twin brothers are in the room packing. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Gosh, Jack, I don't know why we have to go away on this weekend. Neither do I, but Brother Philip insists upon it. Are we all packed? Oh, just about. Shirts, ties, sweaters, socks, quarts, fifths, and pints. <laughs> Good. And put the bottles on the other side of the suitcase. My underwear is snapping at them. <laughs> now, let's see. Hello, boys. Hello, Hello, Brother, Brother Philip. Philip. Uh-oh, those bottles again. Now, look, boys, you got to stop this drinking because we're all going out the country for a weekend and the fresh air will do us a lot of good. Well, I'm not going. Now, sure you are. Think of it, fellas. Chickens, horses, rabbits, and the scent of new mown hay. <laughs> Now, you've just got to go because it'll be a wonderful weekend. Why do we have to go? Because we want it on truth or consequences. <laughs> oh. Now, look, boys, I hate to keep lecturing, but don't you know how bad liquor is for you? Don't you realize that alcohol is your worst enemy? Liquor isn't good for you. Now, you should stay away from it. Ladies and gentlemen, the opinions expressed by Mr. Harris are written in the script and are not necessarily his own. <laughs> All right, we'll go to the country with you. Well, you better get ready. We're leaving on the 715 train. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye, Goodbye brother, brother Philip. Philip. <laughs> Gee, I hate to go away for a weekend. Me too. I was figuring on losing this one. <laughs> yeah. Quick, Brother Philip's coming back. Hide those bottles. Okay, there. Come in. Oh, it's you, Jane. Hello, boys. I just saw Philip, and he told me you're all going away for the weekend. Yes, we are. <laughs> you boys are so wonderful. You know, sometimes I regret that you two are twins. I just can't make up my mind. Make up your mind? What do you mean? Well, there are two of you and only one of me. <laughs> That's funny. We always see two of you. <laughs> Well, don't forget, boys, your train leaves at 7.15. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye brother, brother Philip. Philip. We, we mean goodbye, Janie. <laughs> Gee, what twins we are. We both make the same mistake. Quick, she's gone. Let's open the bottle. Okay. Oh, gee, look, we've only got two bottles left. Well, let's drink one and hide the other. Okay, I'll put it up there in the chandelier. Good. Oh, darn it, I can't reach it. Well, give it to me. I'm higher than you are. <laughs> You are not. I can do it. All right, but don't screw the bottle into the socket like you did the last time. <laughs> when I turn on the switch, it blew out a powerhouse at Boulder Dam. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. There, the bottle's in the chandelier. Now, let's open the other one and... Oh, boys. Yes, yes brother, brother Philip. Philip. Jane and I are going to the... Wait a minute. Give me that bottle. I'm going to pour it down the sink. Oh, no, no, brother Philip. Don't pour it down the sink. That's right, brother Philip. Let Ray drink it. That stuff will eat out the plumbing. <laughs> Well, I don't care, boys. I'm not going to give it back to you. And remember, you're not to leave this room until it's time to go to the train. We, we won't, won't, brother, brother Philip. Philip. Come on, Jack. He's gone. Let's go down to Nat's bar room and he'll give us a drink. Okay. Come on, lads. Set him up. Set him up. Yes, sir. How are you? Nothing to and not another drop until you paid the bill you ran up this afternoon. How much do we owe you? Eighteen thousand dollars. Oh. All right, all right, you can keep your old liquor. We ain't going to the country. Yeah. Come on, Ray, let's go. All right. Hold me up. No. You hold me up. I held you up yesterday. <laughs> Mmm, smell that fresh air. Yeah, isn't it awful? 
That's what's wrong with this country. It's full of them. <laughs> Come on, let's go down to the corner of the Joe's bar. That won't do us any good. I haven't got any money. Neither have I. Not on nickel. Let's try the other side of the street. No. <laughs> this singing won't get us any drinks. I'll go home and get my violin. That's my line. <laughs> I'm tired. Let's lie down here in the gutter. Okay. Wait a minute, Ray. Don't you want to put your head up on the curb? No, I always sleep without a pillow. <laughs> my feet are cold. Pull up that manhole cover. Well, now I'm comfy. <laughs> they can't keep me in here. I'm Napoleon. <laughs> they can't keep me in here. I'm Napoleon. Well, get on my back. I'm your horse. <laughs> Ray. Ray, where are we? I don't know. Let's ask that man in a white coat. Oh, yes. Say, mister. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> Where are we? You're in the alcoholic ward. Alcoholic ward? I want to get out of here. Let me out. Yes, let us out of here. Oh, you don't want to leave until you've seen the floor show. Floor show? Yes. In the middle of the night, you start seeing things. You won't see pink elephants. You're going to see red, white, and blue turkey. Oh, goody, they changed the bill. <laughs> and then you're going to see tiny rabbits in straw hats. Midget monkeys that come through the keyhole. You know, the kind of talent that's handled by Madman Munts. <laughs> You'll see thousands of little snakes that knit themselves into a sweater. And that isn't all. Stop it! Stop it! Oh, I can stop it, but you can. You're going to see beetles. Twenty-three of them running in the Santa Anita Handicap. <laughs> and eleven of them are in the field. There'll be grasshoppers five feet tall. And there'll be woodpeckers pecking on your head. Peck, 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 peck. Yes, sir, you bet. And how? Stop it, stop it, stop it. Let us out of here. Not no. before the floor show. And it'll start as soon as it gets dark. It's like the doctor was saying to me. Delirium is a disease of the night. Well, good night. <laughs> hey, hey, he's gone. Now's our chance to get out. Here's an open window. Okay, let's go. Well, here we are, back in our room. That's funny. We didn't even open the door. No, we crawled in under it. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. You know, Jack, we'll either have to give up drinking or get our knees half sold. <laughs> Let's look for that bottle we hid. Let's see now, where do we put it? Maybe it's in this dresser. Yes, the dresser. The dresser. Maybe it's behind the bookcase. No, it isn't here either. We gotta find that bottle. Maybe it's behind the sofa. Help me move it out. Yeah, the sofa. The sofa. We gotta find that bottle. Wait a minute. The china closet. Yeah, yeah, the china closet. Let's go. Paper plates. Yeah, the bottle isn't there. I'm getting weak. I gotta have a drink. Sit down and rest a while, Ray. Get your mind off of it. I'll turn on the radio. There. I'll sit down. But I gotta have a drink. I tell you, I gotta have a drink. Pass the cola. Hit the spot. Pass the bottle. Shut that off! Oh, find that bottle. Find that bottle. I got to have a drink. Wait a minute. It's getting dark out. Turn on the lights. All right. <laughs> Goes another powerhouse at Boulder. <laughs> Here, 
Here it is, Ray. We found the bottle. We found it. Yeah, we found it. We found it. Say, Ray, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be awful if Mother were here? Yeah. There isn't enough for three of us. <laughs> Sorry we blew out the lights. Now we're in the dark. Can you imagine that guy in the hospital saying we were going to see little animals? Yeah. Let me have a drink. What'd you say? I didn't say anything. Oh. Give me another drink. Huh? I didn't say anything. Do you mean to stand there flapping your wings and tell me you didn't say anything? got wings. Then what are you doing on the chandelier? I'm not on the chandelier. Well, there's something up on the... Look, it's a bat. It's a bat. I see it. It's picking the straw hair off the little monkey. <laughs> oh, the monkey! He's coming at me! He's coming at me! Keep him away from me! Keep him away from me! Oh, this little animal! And here come more of them! They're coming through the keyhole! They're swarming around! They're getting closer! They're surrounding us! Ray! Ray! Look out! I can't help it! I... Ah! Thank heaven they're gone. Tell me, Ray, what did you do? I threw my Oscar at him. <laughs> I knew those things would come in handy. Ladies and gentlemen, two years ago, Dennis Day left our program and went into the Navy. At about the same time, another boy was honorably discharged from the Army Air Forces, and we were very fortunate in getting him to pinch hit while Dennis was away. Of course, I'm referring to Larry Stevens. Now that the war is over, Dennis Day will be back with us next week. Larry, I want to thank you for the wonderful job you've done on our show. You were a great asset, and I'm sure that our listeners feel the same way I do. Well, thank you, Mr. Benny. It sure has been grand being with you and your whole gang. Well, it was grand having you. We'll be hearing you on the air and seeing you soon in the new 20th Century Fox picture, Centennial Summer. Good luck, kid. Thank you, Mr. Benny. Dan <laughs> Land appeared through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and made the soon scene in the picture Kitty. Jack will be back in a minute. First, here's my good friend, Effie Boone. At 49, American. Remember, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Here's what Mr. Roy Lee Daniel of Durham, North Carolina, 32 years an independent tobacco auctioneer, said. I've seen Lucky Strike buy fine, ripe, quality tobacco that's chuck full of aroma, mildness, and good taste. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 15 years. Yes, sir. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, 49, American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. This is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Thanks, Ray Milan, very, very much for appearing on our program and congratulations. <laughs>